Hey guys, it's uh, Marshall here with you again, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on uh, Neverwinter Nights. Uh, this one a little bit different from my normal plug-in how-tos. Uh, this time we're going to uh, go through... I thought it'd be nice if I uh, did a, um, a video walkthrough on how or a good method of setting up a Neverwinter Nights 2 Persistent World. So this is a this is going to be a rather in depth and um, I guess maybe there's probably going to be several videos long, um, but it's going to, I'm going to take you through it step by step uh, on how to create your own persistent world. Now I'm not going to go through how to use the tool set because that's that's a bigger thing, but um, a lot of people seem to be able to grasp the tool set. Uh, but just not so much how to set up their own server because I've had a few comments about you know how do I set up MySQL database uh, I don't know how to use it and how do I set up NWNX you know I don't know how to make all those pieces connect you know I can I can use the tool set to create a module but uh, the rest of it for setting up the persistent world is a is uh, something that people seem to need some help with so that's what I'm doing today so um, you may want to get comfortable and, and uh, get yourself a drink and, and get ready to take some notes um, because it is a bit of a process uh, but once you get it set up uh, you're done it's it's relatively simple to maintain once you've once you've got it going um, so what we're gonna do uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, is talk about uh, the agenda on how I'm gonna go about this uh, the software that we're gonna be using and uh, and, ha and pretty much everything that's included from, from the very beginning. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our actual Neverwinter Nights 2 server. Uh, then after that we're going to set up uh, a Dropbox account, uh, we're going to create ourselves a module, we're going to go through how to publish um, the module and how to get our players to be able to download things like your hack pack you know, with minimal fuss. And then we're going to run our server and, and then also go through uh, configuring our firewall. So we're going to do pretty much everything. And uh, what I'm going to start with here is showing you what I'm using. So that's just timed out on me. I'm just going to open this again. Just give me a second. There. So uh, what I'm going to do, or what, sorry, what, what I have here is I've got a uh, brand new Windows XP Professional uh, workstation. Uh, there is absolutely nothing on it. All it has is uh, Windows Professional and its updates. It has and uh, it doesn't even have like uh, Microsoft DirectX or anything on it. it. It This here is living on uh, a VMware server in my VMware farm um, but you know you're probably going to use a, a PC that you've got laying around somewhere. Uh, you definitely want to run your Neverwinter Nights 2 server uh, and your MySQL database and everything on a separate computer than your normal, you know, play computer, the, the one you use for your gaming. Have a separate machine for that. <clears throat> that's probably running Windows 7 like I am here. Uh, that's this here. It's a Windows 7 uh, machine. This here, I'm remote desktoped into a, another computer, which is a virtual machine uh, in, a, in my basement <laughs> uh, on a VMware farm, but it could just as easily be a, an actual piece of hardware. Uh, down there standalone. So that's what you want to start with. Most people used to have Windows XP in the past so I'm sure you won't have any trouble finding yourself a copy of this. Uh, I have a Microsoft TechNet subscription so that's where uh, I got mine. But uh, get yourself a Windows XP, install Windows XP and, and then leave it at that. Um, because I run a large network at home, I'm, mine is actually configured to connect to a domain, so you don't need to worry about this. This has nothing to do with your Neverwinter Night server. It just makes things a little easier for me. Um, but you you won't have any of this. You'll just log in as the administrator account with all with all the privileges. So first thing we're going to do is just log in to this. And again, um, there's nothing else on this, so we're gonna we're gonna put everything on here. Now. I have a package that I like to use for all my Neverwinter Nights stuff for creating servers because I, I do create a lot of them and uh, when I create a server I have all my uh, files and, and 
specific packages and everything that I'm going to need uh, on a uh, on a share drive on my network. <clears throat> you can put you can put them all on a on a CD or whatever you want to do. It's been loud. Anyway, you want to put yours on uh, a CD or something like that. What I'm going to do, yeah, I don't need to take a tour. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to package up most of the free stuff uh, and and put it on my website for you guys to download. The only thing I won't package up is the actual Neverwinter Nights 2 server software itself uh, because you have to you have to actually have that. But I'll show you what you have to do to to get that going. You, obviously, you have Neverwinter Nights 2, or you wouldn't be be here. <laughs> so uh, I won't package that up. But the the free stuff, the stuff that's been released to the public, like um, NWNX and and my sequel, which is freely available, the uh, the community edition, and uh, and all the freeware type stuff that I'm going to use in this package, I'll probably include it as a kit. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you that kit that I have. So, I like I said, I have it on a share drive here in my scratch pad, but you can uh, you can put it on a CD or something. But I keep it here in my Neverwinter Nights 2 installations folder. So these are this is basically all the things we're going to we're going to use um, for this walkthrough, uh, and I'll go through what they all are. Microsoft DirectX, of course, you need this or the Neverwinter Nights server won't actually run, so you have to have that, and that's uh, 9.0c. Uh, .NET, this is .NET 3.5, you'll need this for the NWNX. Uh, it it uh, won't be very happy unless it's got that. Um, MySQL, this is just uh, where I'm keeping MySQL itself, just, uh, just the actual install file. Uh, Neverwinter Nights, uh, server directory. Now you'll get this from your uh, if you've got Neverwinter Nights 2 installed on your computer through GOG or Steam or whatever, you'll have this folder um, probably in your C colon backslash program files Neverwinter Nights 2 and it'll have all like the data stuff and it'll have like the executables and everything you're going to need and this one here in NWN2 server and all the other stuff so you'll, you'll want to get a copy of that just copy it all out of your directory because that's what you're going to put on your server. Uh, NWNX, again, you'll need an NWNX. Now, the, what I've done here, <clears throat> because I oftentimes run multiple copies of NWNX on the same server, what I'll do is I'll create subfolders for my modules and have a different NWNX configuration in each. So, in my package, you'll see uh, that I keep mine in here for now uh, when I'm beginning. We'll go through all this later in detail. Uh, SQL Yog, this is a, a very good tool for manipulating MySQL databases once you've got one installed, so we'll, we'll go through that some. Uh, start Scripts, of course, I create little shortcuts for my modules, so when I have my module and my server's ready to go and start up, I'll just run this and that'll start my that'll start my server for me. And we'll go through that too. And then uh, Visual C um, Redistribu uh, redistribution package, you'll need this uh, for a couple of the NWNX plugins, so we'll have to install all that. So again, this is what I keep in my kit, and uh, on this particular computer, this XP Professional, and, and, and you know what, just a, as an aside, do try and run this on Windows XP Professional. It is a difficult thing to do on Windows 7, especially if you've got UAC the user access controls on. I do run UAC on my computer, but I know how to get around everything, um, so I know what I have to do to make it work. But for simplicity and even performance, don't try not to run this on. on you know, it it can be done on Windows 7 easy enough, but if you can, if you have it at your disposal, just throw a copy of Windows XP Professional on there. It's it's so much easier. Even even home uh, Windows XP is good. Excuse me will work for this. Uh, okay, so what I've got here is I've got a little 10 gig uh, hard drive, uh, D drive on here, and this is where we're going to put everything for our, uh, for our Neverwinter Nights 2 install. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just start copying some of this stuff, because some of this stuff takes a little while uh, to get copied. And right off the bat, we're going to want our NWN folder, our NWNX folder, and our start scripts. We're going to want these three over here on this on this system. So let's get those copied over. Yes. 
So we'll start that copy and uh, get that going. That, that's going to take 10 or 15 minutes or so. So we'll leave that leave that going. And uh, then we're going to want to start installing some of these other things. So we're going to start with the uh, uh, Visual C redistribution package. So we'll get this installed. And it's pretty straightforward. The usual Microsoft uh, license terms. Now again, the account that I'm using on this computer is an administrative level account. So, uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you're using your administrator account. And that's that. And the next thing we're going to install is DirectX. Now, this part here, not really important what order I install these things. Um, so I'm just installing them. No, I don't want the Bing bar. It's just an annoying thing. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter the order, but a, a little bit later, you really want to start paying attention to the order in which I do things because Nevernight's tool set can be really finicky if if it if you don't do certain things in a certain way. <laughs> and a lot of people have trouble with it and say, oh yeah, that's crap because it doesn't work and it crashes all the time. Yeah. It does if you don't do it things in the correct order. So right now, I'll, I'll let you know when that happens, but right now it's not going to be such a big deal uh, on the order in which we uh, install these things. Uh, so we'll get this one done. And it's just downloading the DirectX. And again, this is a DirectX 9. And this is why I like to do this on a nice clean Windows XP machine with nothing else on it. Um, the only thing I had on it is like on my VMware tools on here because it is a, uh, it's in my ESX farm for VMware. And that and the actual Windows updates, nothing else was installed. I, mean, I didn't even install a video driver or anything on it. It doesn't need any of that. Uh, I did configure it with like two gigs of RAM. You want you want a chunk of RAM in here. This is just a 32-bit machine too, so you don't need to load it up with like 16 gigs or anything like that. Or you won't even notice it. So I'll finish that. Okay, that's DirectX. And then we're going to want to throw in .NET. Now this is a beast. It takes a little while to install this, and I, I love the. Off time guessing 19, 80 minutes. Yeah, we just don't know <laughs> how much time this copy is going to take. It, it will be, this will be done by the time we're ready to use it, so that's not a big deal. And yeah, so the, uh, the .NET is going to install next. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to let this copy in the background here. I'm just going to throw this right here. And once I get this started, then we're going to move on because I don't want to actually sit here and stare at the .NET because it, it's going to take a little bit to install. And this isn't like a super powerful machine or anything. Uh, I read the agreement. No, I'm not sending information. And there we go. So we'll let that run like that. Okay. So uh, that'll run. Now the next thing that we want to install is uh, MySQL. Now this can be a little daunting, especially if you're not familiar with databases at all. Uh, so I'm going to go through it step by step. And I'm not, I'm not a database administrator, but I do know how to use this. So we'll install it here. Did I double click on that? Yes, I did. So we're going to run this. The, the first part is pretty straightforward. It's just next. Yes, I accept the license agreement. Next. Do a typical one. We're not going to configure this for a bank or anything special. It's just pretty straightforward. Now, if you have it within your means, which is which is what I do, I actually run my MySQL server on a different computer than my Neverwinter Nights server. Uh, if you don't have that, then do what I'm doing in this video, which is running both. <clears throat> so we're going to run our MySQL server on this Windows XP machine, and we're also going to run our Neverwinter Nights 2 server on this machine. If you can separate those out, that's awesome, great. 
Uh, if you can't, then you know that's okay too. Just do it this way. So just next and next, and then we do want to launch the instance configuration wizard. So we'll finish that, and that next part should fire up. Okay, next. We're going to do a detailed configuration here, because we like to configure options. We are not going to be a developer machine, we're going to be a server machine, because we are running Neverwinter Nights uh, uh, on here as well. If we did have this as a separate MySQL machine, you could choose dedicated, but for our purposes in this video, it'll be a server machine. Next. We're going to choose multifunctional database um, simply because we want both uh, database types uh, drivers running here, engines running, the NODB and the my ISOM driver. So if you choose like non-transactional only, it'll only install the my ISA, uh, ISOM I -S -A -M, uh, engine. So we'll do multifunction. Doesn't it, it, if you don't use NODB, that's okay. I I used to use this one, but then I found this one performs just a little bit better for Neverwinter Nights stuff, the way it works. Just accept the default install path, and we're going to do a decision support OLAP database. <clears throat> uh, we're not going to have a lot of simultaneous connections to our database, uh, so 20 will be plenty. Uh, we do want to use networking and we do want to add a firewall exception for this port. Uh, default Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3, which is what this is, will have Windows Firewall uh, running on it, and we're going to leave that on too. We're not going to disable that, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that everything works, even with it running. So this is one of the things you'll want to make sure that you do for Windows Firewall, is allow the exception so that we can actually make remote connections to it. Next and standard character set is fine and we're going to install it as a service and launch it automatically so next now root password for your database now this is this password here is just for your mysql it's not for the windows uh, logging in or anything like that it's just for mysql um, this root user this is your super user. This is your administrator for, for those in the Windows universe. This is the guy that has all the power to your MySQL database. His user ID is going to be root, and his password is going to be what you set here. Now, by default, uh, the root user can't connect to any of the MySQL databases on here from a remote machine. Uh, you can only connect locally. However, we're going to be managing this MySQL server from our Windows 7 computer out here, so we're going to want to do this. Now, uh, you don't have to have that on if you're not going to manage it out here, uh, but if, if you do do that like me, you, you definitely want to want to turn that on, especially if you've got a decent password in here. And it's not like you're going to be opening this to the internet or anything like that, so it's just going to be on your local network. So we'll hit next and execute. So it's going off now and doing the install and writing our configuration the way we wanted it. And then it's going to try and start the databases. So that won't take too long. I'll just take a moment. And our copy is still chugging along and our .NET installation is still chugging along there as well. Of course, the more powerful this computer happens to be, the better this will all be in overall. There we go. Services started. It's going to apply some security changes because the default security in MySQL isn't that great. So it's this this little wizard is great for that because it sets the security for you, um, so you don't have to spend the time doing that. And finish. And that's it. Our MySQL database is now installed and running uh, on here. So what we're going to do next is. Uh, because this video is almost 20 minutes now, I'm going to end this video here, and I'm just going to let this finish, and this finish, and then uh, we'll continue on uh, in the next clip.